Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to solve this Laplace equation in the time domain. We are going to take a look at the steady state response. And finally, we are going to say a few words about the damping. We are going to categorize the damping of this particular system. Okay, so what's the first thing we have to do? The first thing we have to do is do a partial fraction expansion and linearize the denominator. There, that has been done for you. As you can see, we have factorized the denominator and we have only now to find A, B, and C. And then we can do a transform from the Laplace domain to the time domain. How do we find A, B, and C? Well, we have to see that since the denominator is the same, all those partial fractions add up to the uh, whatever is there on the left. We, so basically all we have done is split up our fraction on the left into three separate fractions, which together combine to give us back the same thing. So since the bottom is identical, uh, the A, B, and C must add back to the top. As you can see, in order to do that, we've got the top there uh, of our fraction on the right. And what we have done is we've multiplied the A by the missing terms in the denominators of the other fractions. So in other words, A is over S. So we have to multiply it by the other two. S plus 3 and S plus 1. B is over S plus 3, so we have to multiply it by S and by S plus 1. C is over S plus 1, so we multiply it by the other two, which is S and S plus 3, and then we set it all equal to the numerator of our function. What is the next step? Well, the next step now is to zero two of them so as to be able to find out the third. So what we're going to do is we are going to zero S. Now if we zero S, that will drop out C and that will drop out B because there will be a zero there. They will be multiplied and those will be zero. So that will leave us with A. So... In order to find A, we simply divide by the, the S plus 3 and the S plus 1, what is on the right, which is the numerator. And uh, when we plug in 0, we have 3 by 1 in the denominator, which is 3, and uh, 2 in the numerator because the S terms drop out altogether. So that should be obvious to you. Now, for the next step, we are going to set S equal to minus 3. Now, if we set S equal to minus 3, the S plus 3 terms are going to drop out. They're going to become 0, which is going to leave us with the B, S, S plus 1 equal to the S squared plus 4S plus 2. So, we simply divide by the S times the S plus 1, and we set the S equal to 3, as, as shown there. And uh, we plug S equals minus 3 into the quadratic equation S squared plus 4S plus 2. And lo and behold, we end up with minus a sixth. You can check the mass there at your convenience, but we know it is right. Finally, we are going to do C. In order to find C, we set S equal to minus 1, which causes the B and the A to drop out because minus 1 plus 1 gives 0, so that term becomes 0, and we're left with the C. Now, when uh, we set the minus 1, uh, we have minus 1 times minus 1 plus 3 in the denominator, and uh, we have plugged the minus 1 squared gives us the plus 1, plus 4 times minus 1 is minus 4 plus 2 into the numerator. And when we work that out algebraically, we get a half for C. 
So the final expression now is going to be 2 thirds over s, 1 half over s plus 1, and minus 1 sixth over s plus 3. What do we have to do now? Well, as it turns out, when we've uh, factored it that way, we can use the standard transformation to get it back to the time domain. The transform that we're going to use is S plus alpha anything with a numerator on top gives us uh, uh, the natural exponent e to the minus alpha t. That's a standard transform. So let us take what we have and let us use the transform on that and lo and behold, out pops our time domain solution. So when we look at our time domain solution now, we see that we have two exponential terms which are ultimately going to decay towards zero and we have a constant term, two thirds. So over time, the other two terms will be heading towards zero and ultimately at infinity, we would be left with two thirds. But in practical terms, we don't have to go all the way to infinity. Uh, it will drop to a reasonable value for all real world applications much faster than that. So we can say that the steady state response, therefore, is the limit as t tends towards infinity of two thirds. So we just write it mathematically in that way. Now we want to take a look at the um, damping, okay? Now in these systems, the denominator polynomial determines the damping. If the roots are real and different, then we have over damping. If the roots are real and the same, then we have critical damping. And if the roots are complex or unreal, then we have under damping, which means we are going to get oscillation. In this particular case, the roots are real and we already know what they are. If we have minus one or minus three are our two roots. So we can easily see, therefore, that this system is over damped because the roots are real and different. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.